Welcome everyone, and thanks for listening in to our third episode of the Chat with the Chair podcast. Today we're joined by Dr. Frank Henn, Professor and Interim Chair of Orthopedics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Dr. Henn, you were appointed Interim Chair for the department this past December, replacing Dr. Andy Pollack, who held the role for the past 10 years. Tell us more about yourself and why you became an orthopedic surgeon. Thanks, Meredith. I'm happy to be here. I, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and I went to school at Brown with undergrad med school and did my residency at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City, and then did my fellowship in sports medicine in Boston at the Massachusetts General Hospital, and then stayed at the Brigham and Women's Hospital at the Cartilage Repair Center for three months after that, and then joined the faculty in 2010 here at University of Maryland. So I'm the head team orthopedic surgeon for the University of Maryland Terrapins and a team physician for the UMBC Retrievers. Uh, I've served as, as the director of the program in sports since 2017 and the residency director for the University of Maryland residency program since uh, 2013. So I became an orthopedic surgeon through interactions with uh, surgeons when I was a medical student. And I really, the thing that resonated most with me is that orthopedic surgeons are happy people. You know, we deal with quality of life issues, uh, really the reasons for, uh, for what make life worth living and uh, helping patients get back to the pinnacle of function is I think one of the most uh, supremely rewarding aspects of medicine. So that was one of the, the things that resonated with me and why I chose orthopedic surgery. And then sports medicine in particular is really quintessential aspects of that. So the patients function at the absolute highest level of, of function and, and sport and being able to help them get back to that is, is, is what motivates me. Why do you think you were chosen as the interim chair? Yeah, so I'd like to think it's because the, the people thought I would do a good job uh, doing it. I've always had an interest in being a chair. Leadership is something that I um, am passionate about and something that I really devote a lot of effort to. Having been at the department since 2010, I, I have a good sense of how the uh, how it works, and I've worked closely with Dr. Pollock in my role as the director of the program in sports as well as the residency. Um, felt that it, uh, I would be someone who's in a good position to help continue to move the department forward in all the directions that Dr. Pollock had, had, had laid out. And we've really, we've expanded tremendously over the last 10 years and are on track to continue to do that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to helping the department uh, continue to thrive. So you mentioned you're passionate about being a leader. What, what in your eyes makes a great leader? Yeah, so I think it's, I think it's uh, multifactorial. I think being a good listener, it starts with being a good listener and someone who can help connect people and generate engagement help make decisions that benefit uh, the, the whole group. And I, I think that uh, having support of, of the, uh, everyone in the department is really critical to being successful. Uh, you want to be someone who, who can uh, minimize conflict and uh, facilitate collaboration. And that's something that I've done throughout my career and I plan to continue to, to do that. And I think that's one of the things that's kind of characterized this transition is really trying to engage as many voices in the department as we can to make sure that we're, we're all in alignment in terms of how we want to move forward. What have you learned so far in this new role and what do you look forward to most? Yeah, I've learned a lot. It's, uh, you know, it's an incredibly complex organization. We're a big organization. We have uh, been out in the community in many different areas and uh, have really expanded dramatically and uh, from like, a research standpoint, uh, our educational programs are uh, really thriving and continuing to expand and all of the there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into all of those avenues and I, you know, I had a sense of some of it but really the kind of details and the the amount of um, uh, time and energy it takes to make sure that we're we're continuing to to do well in all of those areas uh, is, is the thing that I, that's been most eye-opening for me and I you know I look forward to continuing to to make connections that really Help, help our department and help our faculty uh, continue to grow grow and thrive. Did Dr. Pollock offer you any advice before, before he fully transitioned to his new position with the University of Maryland Medical System? Yeah, he provided tons of advice and I still talk to him regularly. So we speak uh, several times a week. In terms of transition to leadership, I think transition to leadership is healthy in any organization. I think this, as far as transitions go, this is maybe the optimal type of transition where you have the former leadership still accessible and still involved in the organization and still a voice to an advocate for our, our department. Uh, and that, that's, that's been made it a lot easier from, from a transition standpoint for me. And that was something that, you know, fortunately Dr. Pollock didn't enjoy that when he transitioned into this role. So I think it's something that he's prioritized in terms of being a mentor for me and being accessible to, to me because uh, he did not, did not enjoy that when he transitioned. So switching now to the more clinical side of things, you shared what makes a great leader. Um, now I'm going to ask what makes a great orthopedic surgeon. 
Yeah, so it's many of the same traits, I think. You know, in terms of I mean, there's always been excursions of physician first, and that starts with with good with the excellent listening, right? So really, the patient will tell you what the issue is, and you need to be attuned to that. You know, orthopedics is a fantastic field because we we deal with the whole spectrum of musculoskeletal care, so from non-operative to operative. Uh, and I think you know, being interested in all of those areas in terms of how we can help the patient uh, you know, optimize their function, musculoskeletal health, health, I think is what really defines a great orthopedic surgeon. We're not just technicians who do surgery. We really you know, take care of the whole spectrum. And I think uh, for me, that's one of the things that's most, most rewarding uh, for this. So I certainly love to operate and to fix problems surgically. Uh, and you know, the hallmark of an orthopedic surgeon is a patient comes to you with a condition, you solve the problem and they go, go back to their life and, um, uh, and we help, help the next person. So I think being someone who's available is really important. So uh, you can be the best physician or surgeon in the world. If you're not available to your patients, that doesn't help anybody. So you, you have to be, be available and listen and, um, and then act when, when appropriate. What challenges do orthopedic surgeons face across the country, but also challenges locally here in the Baltimore region? Yeah, we could talk all day about that. There's there's a lot of challenges facing the medical field in general, and the orthopedic surgeons are not immune to that. You know, as part of the efforts to contain costs, uh, the orthopedic surgeons are frequently targets for that, particularly with, when it comes to joint replacement, just because the the cost for that, from particularly from Medicare and the government payers, is 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 pretty high. So, uh, we just had our Maryland orthopedic meeting uh, on Saturday, and. You know, we're talking a lot about that, what the challenges are and how we can position ourselves best to take the best care of our patients, because uh, ultimately it comes down to taking care of the patients and um, you know, pushing the field forward. So there's a lot of, a lot of financial challenge, there's a lot of administrative challenges, uh, and, it, and it's magnified in some respects in the Baltimore region just because of the way our healthcare system is set up in Maryland. We have in many respects a unique healthcare system. Uh, with the way hospitals are reimbursed uh, with the Medicare waiver in the state of Maryland. Uh, and I think uh, coming out of COVID has added additional challenges. So there's, uh, you know, people are well aware of the challenges related to the COVID pandemic. What they may not be aware of is that you know, in some respects it's worse now than it's ever been because of the attrition in the field and the lack of new blood coming into the field and the additional demands on the, on the system where we have less capacity from a, from a care standpoint than we've ever had and we really are, are uh, in real danger. So if COVID were to recur in some way, would be catastrophic uh, for the medical system. And we really, we really need help. We need help in terms of resources and, and energy to improve the system to ensure people can still receive the care that they need. You mentioned pushing the field forward. How do you see the field of orthopedics changing the next five to 10 years? Yeah, it's interesting, right? It's probably the things that we can't predict that are, that are going to be the biggest, biggest aspects. Uh, you know, I think there's been a lot of evolution in terms of uh, the site that care is delivered. So we want to try and have the lowest cost uh, care possible uh, for a variety of reasons. And uh, it, that's translated to a, moving a lot of orthopedic procedures out of the hospital. So we've moved a lot of those to an ambulatory care setting and even an office setting to try and minimize the burden on the hospital system. And it, that, that helps decrease costs. It also has benefits to the patient because there's uh, it's a little bit more um, uh, streamlined and boutique type experience uh, where you're not in, in, in a hospital setting and maybe less uh, kind of downsides from a you know, comfort standpoint and a, a potentially infection standpoint. So there are benefits uh, for everybody, and you know, th but those, there, there are growing pains and transition pains with that. And you know, it's things that we've worked through and you know, we've been very successful in some areas and are still working in others. And I think that's something that we, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of effort that's still being ex uh, invested in terms of figuring out the best way to provide care. Blue Ridge Institute has ranked University of Maryland School of Medicine one of the top public medical schools for orthopedic research. Tell us about the current orthopedic clinical research underway here at University of Maryland. Yeah, it's really exciting. So that's been the biggest uh, change over the last 10 years for our department is really the the explosion of uh, clinical and basic science research. And that's really, I have to credit uh, Dr. Pollack, uh, Dr. Staines, our uh, chief of uh, basic science, and uh, Dr. O'Toole and Dr. Slobogen, our directors of clinical research. Uh, we've been inc incredibly successful in terms of securing uh, research support and then delivering on that support with landmark uh, studies. 
So most recently, uh, we just published in the New England Journal of Medicine, a, a results of a pragmatic trial comparing low molecular weight heparin to uh, aspirin for deep venous thrombosis prophylaxis in patients undergoing orthopedic surgery for trauma. So both pelvic and acetabular surgery and extremity surgery. And what we found is that there was no, no signal in any, in any aspect of this. So no difference between aspirin and low molecular weight heparin, which has major implications for how we treat patients and major cost implications uh, going forward. So it's clearly a landmark study. I think that the, uh, this is something we're going to probably continue to expand into other areas as well. Uh, so that was uh, incredibly, incredibly impressive accomplishments and it, uh, trans the, the culmination of many, many years of, uh, of, of work. It's clear that the clinical research aspect is a differentiator for your department. What else makes the University of Maryland Depar Department of Orthopedics unique? Yeah, so there's lots of things. Our relationship with shock trauma. So shock trauma is the flagship for the University of Maryland Medical Center. It's the flagship for our orthopedic department. So we are the world leaders in orthopedic trauma care. And that's something we continue to be proud of and continue to develop. The clinical research arm of that has really brought that to the fore uh, for us and will continue continue to do so. But what people don't know is that we really are, are national and world leaders in really all areas of orthopedics. And that's something that's really developed over the last uh, 10 years since I've been here. So you know, from a research standpoint, we're uh, doing trials and publishing in all, all subspecialties of orthopedics. We have the experts in all, all subspecialties. Uh, we provide training in all subspecialties and we will continue to grow and uh, develop in, in all of those areas and continue to, continue to be national leaders. What advice would you offer to someone who is considering a career in orthopedics or orthopedic surgery? Yeah, so I think it's the best field in medicine uh, for a variety of reasons, as I've already indicated. So I, I think it's something you should uh, continue to pursue it if, if that's your interest. You know, I'll say that it's it's incredibly competitive. Uh, it's, it's it's been competitive over the last twenty years, but it's has reached the point where it's the most competitive specialty in all of medicine. I think for good reason. Uh, you know, I think that despite that, um, you can certainly still be successful uh, pursuing the field. You know, one of the neat things about our field too is there's lots of avenues into musculoskeletal care other than orthopedics, and that's one of the the distinguishing factors of our department is we have multidisciplinary approaches to care. So whether it's primary care, sports medicine, physiatry, uh, pain management, uh, physical therapy, athletic training, uh, we have all of those uh, providers in our, um, in our, in our practice. And uh, so it doesn't necessarily need to be orthopedic surgery to be, to be involved in musculoskeletal care, but orthopedic surgery, I think uh, certainly from a surgical standpoint is the, is the key to uh, providing uh, musculoskeletal uh, uh, definitive musculoskeletal care for many conditions. Before we close out, is there anything else you think people listening in should know? Yes, I think the future is very bright uh, for the University of Maryland Department of Orthopedics. Obviously, we're in a time of transition, but I think that uh, we're on track to continue to expand and to continue to be, be leaders in, in orthopedic care and orthopedic research and orthopedic education. And if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or any of our faculty. Thanks again for stopping by for Chat with a Chair, brought to you by University of Maryland Faculty Physicians, Inc. For more information about today's guest or to listen to additional episodes, visit umfpi.org backslash podcast. Until next time.